Laminar Research announced recently that an upcoming version of x likely to be labelled 11.5, will for the first time incorporate Vulkan, an advanced API. Why are they doing this and what improvements can we expect? Hello and welcome. My name's Mark. Welcome to the SimHanger, the SimHanger for all things flight sim related. And today, well, we're going to be having a look at Vulcan. No, not that Vulcan. Not that Vulcan either. The Vulcan that we're talking about is an application program interface being incorporated into an upcoming release of X-Plane 11, 11.5 to be exact. Today, we're going to have a quick look at what is an API, what is Vulcan, and what can we expect this to bring to X-Plane. If you'd like to see more from SimHanger, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell for future notifications. Let's get started. So what exactly is an API or an application program interface? Well, it's a set of routines, protocols and tools for building software applications. Basically, an API specifies how software components should interact. APIs are used in many different types of programs, including databases and operating systems. In the case of Vulkan, this is a hardware API. So avoiding all the techie stuff, the game engine feeds the information to the API and vice versa, and the API in turn feeds the information to your GPU, your graphics card, and the CPU, your processor, before they in turn feed that information to the output. From this, we can determine the importance of the API. In the case of OpenGL, it could feed the information to the CPU, but would heavily load Core 1. In terms of Vulkan, it's more versatile and can spread the workload across the cores. Since 2006, OpenGL, the current API for X-Plane, has been managed by the non-profit technology consortium Cronus Group. This is a combination of big and small companies all working together and include names such as Intel and Valve and so on. Originally called GL Next, Vulkan is the successor for OpenGL. Vulkan is a derivative of AMD's Mantle. Vulkan offers greater performance compared to its GL derivatives and better control of the hardware. This is where Vulkan comes in offering at least the same graphics quality, but with improved performance. With lower overhead, more direct control over the GPU and lower CPU usage. Vulkan is the only cross-platform next-generation API. It's similar to DX12 for Windows and for Metal for Apple, but DX12 is Windows 10 only and Metal, Apple only. x of course, runs on a Mac and Metal is being incorporated there. Let's now turn to x and see what the developers, Ben and Sydney, have to say. Laminar have been doing a good job recently in keeping us updated on how far they've got and what sort of issues they're experiencing. Let's hop across to their website and I'll leave links to the first article in the notes below. Subsequent links can be found on that page. In this update, Ben advised us that the private beta was being launched and that in 11.5 we can expect to find a checkbox in the render settings that would allow us to revert back to OpenGL just in case we run into problems with Vulkan or Metal. He also stated that the reflection slider is going to change what it does and revert back more or less to what it did in x 10 and that it would not update the environmental cubes in real time. He also highlighted a couple of problems being experienced with video RAM or VRAM. OpenGL would swap it into system memory, whereas Vulkan was reducing the resolution of the textures. Ben also advised us that they would not be using uncompressed textures in version 11.5. He also shared with us a number of graphs, this one being OpenGL and the spikes on the orange bar at the top there are a result of pauses and stutters. And this one here is Vulkan and we can see it's fairly smooth, no spikes or stutters. The stutters under OpenGL being caused by page swapping out to system memory. In an update a few days later, Ben advised us that 
feedback on smoothness and frames per second had been positive, but they were still wrestling with the impact of managing the VRAM and the impact of blurry textures, particularly relevant if you've only got a small amount of memory on your graphics card. More testing was required. In a recent update, we're advised that not 100% of VRAM could be committed to the textures and that a certain amount had to be reserved for plugins and the like. However, the focus was again very much on the problems with VRAM and the texture resolution, as well as an explanation on why OpenGL and Vulkan treat these differently and how they do so. I won't deal with that in detail in this video, but the details are on the website. Again, links in the notes below. At the Flight Sim Show at Cosford in October 2019, Laminar gave us an update on various aspects including the incorporation of Vulkan and gave us some graphs of performance improvements in terms of frames per second for both AMD and NVIDIA graphics. Looking promising. Whilst Laminar are struggling with the VRAM issue at the moment, I'm sure they'll be able to overcome it. I certainly hope so. But in terms of the future and performance improvements, well, it's only going to be a positive sign. And that this will give, hopefully, explain a new lease on life. Laminar Research have released this rendition of x likely to be labelled version 11.5 on Private Beta recently. Private Beta is a small select group of experienced users made up, I imagine, predominantly of developers, and they will work hand in hand with Laminar to identify new issues as well as work with them on known issues such as the difficulties they're experiencing in terms of texture resolution as a result of the different way that Vulkan manages VRAM. So why are Laminar Research incorporating Vulkan into x at this stage? Well, Vulkan is the next step in the development of the OpenGL platform, and it's able to take advantage of modern CPUs and processors and multiple cores. This offers us, like Simmers, the opportunity for better frames per second and improved performance overall, as well as arguably in the longer term, greater versatility and options for developers. I understand why at this stage there's the OpenGL bridge to ensure backwards compatibility with all the plugins and so on. However, that certainly must be some form of restraint or restriction for developers in terms of what they can and cannot incorporate into the next edition of x -Plane. certainly for now anyway. Well, I hope you found this useful and informative. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you again soon and bye for now.